World War Two. So the Cold War is going to be addressed on a separate video, all right? But it's going to be on the same PowerPoint. So World War II or the Second uh, World War was a global war that lasted from 1939 to 1945, involved the Allies and the Axis, really nothing that's really, you know, new that we haven't known out of these. Um, this is what the, the, um, the, who made up the Axis I mean, the Allies, the U.S., Britain, France, um, New Zealand, India, Soviet Union, China. And then when we look at the Axis, it's going to be primarily Germany, Italy, and Japan. So, uh, the day after FDR became president, um, Hitler became came to power and promised to fix the severe economic problems of the Weimar Republic and restore national pride that had been battered after the First World War and the Treaty of Versailles. Um, Japan actually had signed a pact, an anti-communist pact, with Germany and Mussolini in Italy. At first, the United States didn't really take an aggressive stance on this. Um, they were kind of looking to be a little bit more isolationist. Even though they were still aware of some of the fanaticism, and some of the things that were happening in Europe. We're going to talk about the European theater and we're also going to talk about the, the, the Pacific theater. So we can kind of... Uh, you know, get on the same page when I'm talking about Pacific and, and European and all that stuff. So, um, but, you know, we still had an isolationist type of view here in the United States where um, about 94% of P Americans at that time in 1937 did not think we should get involved. Which is interesting, right? When the U.S., uh, when the Japanese sank the American gunboat, the USS Panay Chinese water, still the, the opinion remained isolationist. Japan apologized and took steps which appear to signal a, kind of a movement toward peace. Keep the U.S. out of war. Let's be neutral. This is a picture of the USS Panay being sunk. Originally, like I said, when the United States tried to remain isolationist, they had something passed that was attempted to be passed called the Ludlow Amendment. And basically what the Ludlow Amendment was, it was an amendment to the Constitution that would require a national referendum when we would need to declare war on somebody, right? So if there was an aggressive action and um, we needed to declare war against a country, in a sense, we would have to go out and exercise our right to vote to allow the United States to get into some type of armed conflict, right? Or a declaration of war. This was 21 votes short of passing. So, you know, Something that might have really affected us. Obviously, we haven't declared war since World War II. Um, Korea, Vietnam, the, per the Persian Gulf War, the War on Terror were all uh, done by military actions, were all which were all approved by uh, Congress and not a declaration of war. This is Louis Ludlow. So we started to see in the European theater the Axis gaining momentum. Uh, Hitler ran through Austria demanded a large part of Czechoslovakia. Um, Hitler invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia in 39. Um, Franco from Spain and Mussolini and the Japanese were also on the march. In May, Germany and Italy started a military alliance so we could see the Axis powers really gain momentum. On the first day of September in 1939, Germany invaded Poland. Uh, England and France had pledged to support the Poland as a result they declared war two days later. At that time, America only had 174,000 soldiers. 
as compared to Germany, who had 12 million. So another thing that was a little bit concerning. We started to see the war spread in the European theater. Uh, during the spring of 1940, Nazi troops rode through Denmark, Norway, and the Low Countries in France. They practiced something called Blitzkrieg. So if there's any football fans out there, this is where the term Blitz comes from. Where you, you know, a little bit opposite where the defense sends um, a bunch of rushers to try to sack the quarterback. In this case, the Blitzkrieg is more offensive as opposed to defensive, right? You, you Lightning war, where you go out and attack with a lot of ferocity, right? Great Britain, who was the next target, was sued fighting for those lives. And uh, war, uh, the Germans were right on the brink of crossing into Great Britain, but were prevented by the English Canal. And here we could see the English Channel. And then we could hear, see here... The German Occupy Zone, right on the doorstep of France, just being blocked out by the English Channel. As a result of the Nazis' triumphs in the European theater, in the Pacific theater, the Japanese moved in strategic portions of northern French Indochina, which is Vietnam today, and they signed a Treaty of Alliance with Germany and Italy. Um, still, as a result of this, we still had a really strong feelings toward isolationism. Especially among German and Irish ethnic groups, college students, and Republicans. Here is another map of the Japanese expansion before Pearl Harbor. And when we started to get on our path to war, in 1941, you know, Roosevelt asked for uh, $7 billion to lend and lease war supplies to any country who they thought might need it and whose defense deemed necessary for the defense of the United States as well. This was known as the Lend-Lease Act of 1941. Um, he wanted to make America the arsenal of democracy. And after a furious battle in Congress, aid finally started to begin to flow to England. And now it was really evident that the United States was on the side of the Allies. Hitler, in June of 1941, violated his alliance with Stalin, Joseph Stalin, and attacked the Soviet Union. And both the British and American governments promised to help resist the aggression, and a billion dollars in aid was soon on its way. On September 4th, the destroyer USS Greer was attacked by a German sub. It was tracking off the coast of Iceland. As a result of this, uh, FDR declared that American ships had the ability to shoot on sight all German subs found between Iceland and North America. So tensions were running high. And here's a picture of the USS Greer. Then Pearl Harbor happened, right? What caused Pearl Harbor to happen? In July of 41, uh, the Japanese moved into southern Indochina. Um, FDR was hopeful that economic pressure would restrain Japan as all of their assets were frozen in the United States, ending trade between the two nations. Uh, the Dutch governor of the East Indies also, also cut off an oil supply to the Japanese, which really angered them. Uh, the Japanese military and government moderate waged a heated debate about the nation's future foreign policy, and as a result of this, Japan started to plan an attack on the U.S. On the morning of December 7, 1941, which is known as the Day of Infamy, uh, George C. Marshall, who was chief of staff at the time, sent a warning to, uh, based on an intercepted code to Hawaii and several other strategic locations. The telegram to Hawaii was delayed after its arrival and didn't reach the military until the bombs were already dropped on Pearl Harbor, which was home of the Pacific Fleet and a lot of uh, battleships and, and aircraft carriers at the time. It sank 21 Air American warships, destroyed 165 planes, and killed 2,338 military and civilian personnel. Uh, that number was eclipsed on 9-11. So we could see, you know, kind of the atrocity and some of the, the, the really hardships that came out of that. Uh, the sinking of the Arizona, which is now a, a, a memorial site in Pearl Harbor in Honolulu, took the lives of 1,177 crewmen. Um, in retrospect, they didn't really hurt the U.S., but gave them a reason to get into the war. And here's a picture. Uh, as a result, citizens went to work, right, to help the war effort. 
uh, rations, you know, rationing car parts, rationing steel. Um, at this time, you know, we had mass ma manpower shortages hastened by the draft and the need for dis the need for defense workers, which actually uh, allowed women to get into the workforce. And in 1943, wartime employment peaked by more than 12 and a half million people working in basic war industries. And as you can see, this is also stimulating our economy and helping out with the bad economic cycle that we just experienced during the, the Great Depression. Um, Military-wise, the Selective Service uh, gives the total inductions during World War II or the total number of people drafted at 11,535,000. That would be right around, uh, uh, somewhere around 20% of drafted based on registration. Um, 38.8 were uh, volunteers and 61.2 were draftees. Our economy grew, you know, government services were needed, government purchased goods and services reached 89 billion in 1944, and profits rose, and about half of our annual production went to the war effort. Women started working outside the home from 14 million to 19 million. Again, I think it's really understated the contributions that women made in the workforce during the war. Here's a nice picture of that. Minorities also uh, made a very real contribution. Um, even though we had uh, a bunch of Japanese Americans placed in uh, internment camps under or Executive Order 9066, um, even though a lot of them were, you know, some of them were second, third generation Americans, they were still placed in the camps. Um, African Americans were still discriminated against. And this is a picture of the Kutsuji Airmen, which I don't know if you know the story about these, but read about it. It's a really incredible, harrowing story. Native American Code Talkers. It's another interesting story. Um, there's a Nicolas Cage movie about it if you want to watch it, but there's also some very good documentaries out, about, out there. Okay, now let's go back to the Pacific Theater. Um, Hitler was attacking Great Britain and the Soviet Union simultaneously and threatened to take over the whole of Europe. Uh, this posed, obviously, a danger to the Western Hemisphere. Um, in November of 42, Allied troops fought the Germans out of North Africa. Italy's army finally collapsed. Um, in Sicily, Mussolini was driven from power, and Allied troops quickly moved into Italy, facing powerful German forces. Now, we also started to become a little bit more knowledgeable about the Holocaust, according to who you, who you want to uh, maybe look at and whose documentations you believe to be more accurate. Um, there's beliefs that the Allies were aware of the Holocaust uh, in 1944, and they were even preparing war crimes indictments against uh, Hitler and his top Nazi commanders. But there are also secret documents that the League of Nations and the UN later found out that they knew of the camps as early as 1942. So, you know, a little bit of, 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 of a disagreement be these, between these two dates. Um, one of the more horrific things that happened in our world history. Um, and it would have been, obviously it would have been a, a lot less tragic if we would have done something to stop it um, in 1942. But soon uh, Europe was to be liberated, right? And Germans breached France. And also we're moving toward the Great Britain, but the English Channel prevented the Germans from moving supplies into Great Britain. The Battle of Normandy, which happened on June 6, 1944, which is detailed in the movie Saving Private Ryan, resulted in Allied liberation of Western Europe from the Nazi control. The surprise attack on the beach of Normandy involved 3 million men, 4,000 landing craft, 600 warships, and some 11,000 aircraft. Uh, the Allied losses were horrendous, especially among the Americans at Omaha Beach. And this was one of the largest scale assaults in the history of the world and required extensive planning. Here is a picture of a boat coming off of June 6, 1944, where a lot of these people who were maybe not old, much older than you all, 2021, were in the midst of a battle. On July 25th, following the devastating air bombardment, the First Army broke through German lines. Paris was liberated. And by October, Americans were pushing into German soil. And on May 7, 1945, Germany officially surrendered to the Allies, bringing an end to the European conflict in World War II. In the Pacific Theater, 
uh, Japanese struck quickly after Pearl Harbor taking Guam, Wake Island, and Hong Kong in December, and Singapore and Java in 1942. American Marines landed in Guadalcanal in August of 1942, and, was a fierce, and there was a fierce struggle that lasted six months before the Japanese conceded defeat. The Allies invaded the Marshall Islands, the Admiralty Islands, Hollandia in Dutch New Guinea, the Marianas, the Palos, and the Philippines. In October, the Battle of Leyte Gulf in the Philippines gave control of the Pacific to the Allies. The Japanese lost a lot of people. Over 50,000 died in the effort to retain the Marianas. And in two days of the Battle of Philippine Seas, the Japanese lost three carriers and about 400 planes. Um, the savage fighting on the tiny Pacific island of Iwo Jima and Okinawa in the battle uh, in the winter of in spring of 1945 told how bloody the invasion would be. The Marines suffered 20,000 casualties at Iwo Jima, and this always is a very important thing to me because my grandfather was actually a corpsman in the Navy and was attached to a, a Marine outfit and fought on the Battle of Iwo Jima. So seeing this picture always reminds me of my grandfather and what he fought in the war, and he never talked about it. I would ask him about it. He would never uh, go into details. So I always, uh, you know, hold this in such high regard because it reminds me of my grandfather. Um, atomic bombs were eventually dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki um, in August of 1945, which led to the end of the war. Uh, the World War killed about 322,000 Americans, injured about 800,000 and this pales in the comparison, however, of the tens of million people that were lost in Europe and Asia. Um, Russia lost about 26 million people and close to 50 million people died in the Holocaust. So um, something that is an important part of our history, but we also need to understand the losses. Okay, guys, take a look at the next video on the Cold War. There'll be a separate video on the Electoral College and also um, the Great Depression. Okay, we'll see you soon.